The trouble's definitely not over at MSNBC because less than 24 hours after Rachel's catastrophic interview with Jean Carroll, you have Joy Reid having to come out and apologize on live television because she said something, well, she shouldn't have. And by the way, I have a feeling, just a little feeling that there's some people in the White House really upset right now with Joy Reid. I mean, really upset because, you know, she went where you weren't supposed to go. But, you know, I got to tell you, I mean, heck, like in the last three days, I think I've agreed with her twice. This is getting re real and scary. But she's actually talking some sense, especially on this one. And she's getting called out for it. I'm going to, well, first let's watch her apology. Okay. So here she is apologizing for what you're going to see after. Here we go. Before we go, I just want to apologize very quickly. Uh, I was chatting during a clip that was playing, um, and you know we try to keep this show very PG-13, so I just want to apologize to anyone who was listening to my behind-the-scenes chatter. Uh, deeply, deeply apologize for that, because you know it's PG-13 up around here. So thank you to you all for watching The Great Doubt. And inside with Jen Sock. Okay. <laughs> she says a bad word. She says a bad word. It's interesting. She's apologizing for her language, but she's not actually apologizing for what she said. And I actually totally agree with what she said, because I don't think this team has a clue. Let's, let's listen to this, okay? So they're, they're talking about the, the difficulties that we're now facing in the Middle East, which are getting pr really pretty serious, right? Pretty serious in, in light of three Americans having been killed, so many wounded, and I want you to see her. So what she has forgotten, I, I worked in TV a long time. Basically, you kind of got to operate under the assumption that the microphone is always hot. It's always on. But typically what happens is as soon as they go to the tape, if you're in one of those fancy TV studios, like here, it's what you see. It's what you get, right? Another subscribe, reminder, subscribe, everyone. But if you're in one of those fancy, fancy TV studios, you've got an audio person whose job it is to turn your microphone off anytime they're playing a clip, they're playing video, et cetera. So you think you're home free, but you're really not. At least not if the audio guy forgets about you. <laughs> okay. And that's exactly what happened to Joy Reid here. So let's let her take it away on this one. A big old F-bomb. Well-deserved. Over the weekend, President Biden said he's ready to take action if Congress is serious about solving the border issue. If that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another f war. <laughs> Oof. One more time, Drew. One more time. It's just, it's kind of hard to hear. We bleeped it out so you wouldn't actually have to be offended by the actual word. But one more time, because I just want to hear that again. Over the weekend, President Biden said he's ready to take action if Congress is serious about solving the border issue. If that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another war. <laughs> she said, starting another mm, war, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, like, why is he doing that? Why are we in this? Look, I'm not going to say, like, why is he doing this now? Look, there's just been a series of steps, okay? A series of things that have happened. I think back to McCain, whether you like him or not, he refused to vote for Blinken as a deputy secretary of state under President Obama. And the reason he refused, he said, was because Blinken didn't know his <clears throat> arse from his <clears throat> elbow, as my, uh, one of my aunts would say. <laughs> It's my paraphrasing. McCain was more eloquent than that, but he did say that he feared American lives would be lost and that Blinken would be putting American lives at risk because he did not think that this guy knew what he was doing in any way, shape, or form. This guy, by the way, now our Secretary of State, longtime foreign policy advisor to Joe Biden, who has gotten basically everything in his entire career. And that's a long career. We're talking 50 years here. People, everything wrong on foreign policy. So we got Blinken running things, and it's just been a series of missteps, right? Going back to, to day one, frankly. And so now we're in a situation where our back is up against the wall, and no one wants to be here, and nobody wants to go to war. Trust me, no one really wants that. But the question then becomes, like, 
where, where does this go? Like, if you're not strong, if you're not out in front, if you're not telling Iran how it should be, and they think that, hey, you know, right after you give them that money, remember the money that was given? We released, like, the hostages plus $6 billion, and we're like, oh, but it was theirs to start. Well, you didn't have to give it back. They're still saying, oh, well, you know, we, we have it in bank accounts. We haven't fully given it back. We're going to run that story down, I'll tell you, because, listen, I think that every signal was sent to them that the U.S. wants to be your friend and we're nice and blah, blah, blah. And then what happens October 7th? And they greenlit those attacks. A reporter from the Wall Street Journal had that story and that intel that they went ahead in Iran and they greenlit Hamas to do this. And so now it's just all boiling up, right? Partly because they did not want to be excluded. The Abraham Accords developed under Jared Kushner, the, by the way, Jewish son-in-law of Donald Trump and Donald Trump. They had the Abraham Accords in place. It was going to bring peace to Saudi Arabia and Israel. Iranians didn't like that. What do you know? All of this starts to happen. So it's like, guys, you know, you got to be playing chess, not checkers. And I don't know as Blinken is capable of that. But you think about how we weren't supposed to get this, right? We were never supposed to get this because Joe Biden promised. After all, like if we elected Donald Trump for another four years, it was going to be for sure, war with Iran. Remember this little clip? We went and dug it back up for you. I, I got to play it for you. I got to play it, guys, because this is him on the campaign trail in 2020. And he's out there promising that, you know, <laughs> Trump is bad. He is good. He will keep us out of war. Listen to Joe Biden. The world has changed because what Trump has done. And the American people, including independents and some Republicans, know how bad he is, know how much he's misrepresented, know how he's getting close to getting us in a war. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. The fact of the matter is, there's a lot at stake in this election. Wow. He actually sounded a little more coherent back then. Am I right? And just a little? So that was Joe Biden campaigning back in 2020 and campaigning on this idea that you had to elect him. You had to elect him because otherwise we were going to be at war with Iran. What, what do you think this is? Gosh, I hope it's not. But what did Joy Reid have to say again about this? Shall we play the... Just humor me, Drew, right? I mean, I, I, I actually like it. I like it when these people are honest. I, I, I'm heartened by that. Joy Reid on President Biden. Over the weekend, President Biden said he's ready to take action if Congress is serious about solving the border issue. <laughs> if that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. And Congress needs to get it done. Start another war. <laughs> Starting another effing war. Oh my goodness.